Hey guys, welcome back to another Planet Mythical Paints. Today we'll be talking you through how to paint the remainder of the Farmer Maggot Vista, which is Fierce Papa's Grip, Fang and Wolf. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to leave a like, comment or subscribe if you enjoyed, and without further delay, please sit back, relax and enjoy the video. We're going to show you two separate colour schemes for painting Farmer Maggot's dog. Grip and Fang will be painted to be traditional Doberman dogs, and Wolf will be painted with a different tone just to break up the pack a little bit and add some character to these loyal hounds. We'll only be showing you the body coloration for Wolf, however, as the rest of the details, the collar, etc., will be uniform with Grip and Fang, so there's no real need to show these stages twice in the video. To start Grip and Fang, base coat the entire models with a 50 50 mix of Abaddon Black and Eshin Grey. This will look extremely dark on the miniature and almost like you've applied no paint at all, but trust us here as we want a really dark, natural, not quite black tone to work off for the following layers and highlighting stages. Add more Eshin Grey for the first layer stage. Again, you want to coat the entire model at this point to give the following wash a lighter tone to work with. The almost black base coat we applied will help to keep the dog skin from becoming too vibrant at this stage. You may want to apply this in two or three thinner coats in order to keep the skin smooth and give the dogs the glossy, shiny, smooth coat we want by the time we finish. Once the wash is dried, reapply the previous mix over the fur. This time you want to make sure to leave the null oil showing in the deepest recesses to create a sense of natural depth and shadow. Now for the first highlight stage, add a small amount of Dawnstone to the previous Eshin Abaddon mix, bringing the overall mixture to an approximate split 25% Dawnstone and 75% of the original mix. Now you want to focus on picking up the musculature over the dog's body, face and legs. Areas to focus on include the snout, ears, brow, leg muscles and hindquarters as well as their shoulders and carefully outlining the ribcage on their undercarriage. Take your time here and try and keep your highlights fairly tight as we want to create a sense of muscle movement and texture on the model that ultimately doesn't have a lot of the fine sculpted texture to work with.
Finally, add more Dawnstone to the mix for the final edge highlight. This will bring the mixture to an approximate 50-50 split Dawnstone in the Abaddon Eschen mix. Retrace over your previous highlights, keeping your lines tighter and neater and focusing a bit more on the upper and outermost areas of skin to reflect where the light will be moving across the dog's body. By the end, you should have a very natural, defined looking coat of fur for these two loyal hounds. Now we want to pick out the characteristic Doberman markings, grip and fang. To do this, carefully apply some slightly thinned down XV88 to the areas you want for the dog's markings. Here we focus on the snout, the jaw, the paws, eyebrows, ears and across the top of the front of their legs. Now you can bring up the hue of these markings by adding 50% Talon sand to the mix. Carefully paint over all the previously defined markings. Try and stay as neat as you can to avoid bleeding over onto the rest of the coat, but don't stress too much if you happen to overspill. What's a few stray furs anyway?
add some pallid witch flesh to the mix of the first highlight stage. Now focus on the upper and outer areas of these markings, similar to how we painted the black fur, in order to create a sense of depth and shadow and to further define their musculature. Finally, add more Pallid Witch Flesh to the mix for the final edge highlight, bringing the mix to an approximate 50-50 split of Pallid Witch Flesh and the original mix. Now focus this on the upper and outermost areas to give the markings a slightly glossy look as if the light was hitting them. Next, carefully fill in their eyes by applying two pinpoint dots of pallid witch flesh either side of their eye sockets. This in turn will define their pupils. Carefully pick out the teeth using Rackarth flesh. Make sure your brush is a good point to it in order to avoid repainting over the markings around the snout. Now carefully dot highlight all the teeth using pallid witch flesh. Paint the colours with Doom Ball Brown. Now edge highlight either side of the collars with tusk or fur. This adds a nice natural spot colour which serves to break up all the black fur quite nicely. Carefully apply a dot layer to all the studs around the collar with lead belcher. Next pick out their collar medallions with Rune Lord Brass. Once the wash is dry, I like with Sycorax Bronze. Now to tackle Wolf. 
We're almost going to be inverting the colour scheme we use for Grip and Fang, but with a slightly different colour palette in order to create some differentiation between the three puppers. To start off, base coat Wolf's Fur with a 75-25 mix of Mournfang Brown and Dryad Bark. Once the wash is dried, apply a layer by adding 25% Deathclaw Brown to the Mournfang Dryad mix. As we did with the other dogs, start focusing on blocking out more of the defined musculature and areas of skin, leaving the Agrax Earthshade showing in the deepest recesses. Continue to add Deathclaw Brown to the mix for the next highlight stages. At each time, focus on pushing your highlights more to define the feature of the model as we did for Grip and Fang. We've chosen Deathclaw here as it's the most natural progression to Mourn Fang, but also maintains a degree of depth from the early edition of the Dryad Bark. Once you're happy with your defined features, apply a final edge highlight of pure Deathclaw Brown, once again playing particular attention to areas such as the snout, ears, face, the leg muscles, ribcage, the back of the dog and defining his fluffy tail. Now, in direct contrast to Grip and Fang's sandy markings, we're going to be applying darker markings to Wolf. Apply a base coat to the areas you wish to mark out with a mix of Abaddon Black, Storm Vermin Fur and Deathclaw Brown. 
The death claw here just helps to subtly tie in the markings to the rest of the fur and stops the contrast being too stark, and the Abaddon tones it down just enough for it to look natural. Again, we have focused our markings on the snout, paws, top of the head, length of the back, and tip of the tail. Once the wash is dried, add more storm vermin fur to the mix and highlight all the previously marked out areas. Once you're happy with the tone and the looks of the markings, apply a final edge highlight to the markings with pure storm vermin fur just to make them pop a bit more against the tan look of the fur. The rest of the model, the collar, teeth, eyes etc are painted exactly the same as the other two dogs to create some uniformity, so please refer back to that part of the video if you need a refresher. And there you have it, three loyal hounds finished to help protect Farmer Maggot and his much sought after mushrooms. 